Surprise, surprise, Google Gemini dropped. So the very basics of this is, is that there is a new model that we've been talking about forever called Google Gemini. It is their answer to GPT-4. This is like their, I don't know, eight minute announcement video. We're going to rock it through it in under a minute. But that was Sundar Pichai and Demis Hassabis, who was the CEO of DeepMind. Google restructured recently and put Demis in charge of a team internally. They merged their AI efforts internally with the DeepMind team. And this is uh, the fruit of that labor. Gemini is our largest and most capable model. It means that Gemini can understand the world around us in the way that we do. Uh, and absorb any type of input and output. So not just text like most models, but also code, audio, image, and video. Confirmed, we've talked about this for a while, multimodal, meaning this AI can cross domains. It can understand text, code, uh, video, and audio. So you can show it a sketch, and we'll get to this video later because they've demoed some of these capabilities. You could show it a sketch of a guitar and say, what does this picture sound like? And it will generate sounds of a guitar. And then you can show the guitar plugging into an amplifier and say, what does it sound like now? And it will intuit, oh, it's probably an electric guitar. Gemini will be available in three sizes. Gemini Ultra, our most capable and largest model for highly complex tasks. Gemini Pro, our best performing model for a broad range of tasks. And Gemini Nano, our most efficient model for on-device tasks. Just like a cell phone announcement from a company or whatever, it's like, we've got three different flavors of Gemini, Ooh, right? Yeah, exactly. It's like the iPhone <laughs> XL, XL yes. Pro, and XL Ultra Pro. But the interesting thing with this is, so the Pro seems like it's going to be kind of like the everyday use case, but the Ultra one, which I think we'll get into, there's yeah. some really interesting stuff they're doing from a science perspective and from a programming perspective that may be the next step we've been kind of thinking about. Uh, let's dive into some of the capabilities. As a parent, you may have to help your kid with their homework. With Gemini, you can upload a photo of handwritten answers on a worksheet. Not only can Gemini solve these problems, but this is the amazing part. It can read the answers and understand what was right. <laughs> when you're laughing, I'm going to stop, Gav. I don't want my kid to know this. I don't want my kids to be able to have an awareness of <laughs> yes, this. Come on, do. Gemini. In yeah. three years from now, well, okay. We, we tend to overestimate. So, okay. Maybe 13 years from now, sure. the notion of you even doing this math problem as a is student insane. is going yes. to seem odd, right? Yes, I think so. And I think that if nothing else, it'll be something that gets done in class in real time to prove that you knew it. So like, that is definitely, you're not going to have homework like this for sure. I would, I would, in fact, I would say you're not going to have homework like this within a couple of years, probably. Why is basic math fascinating? Why is it a good test for these models? And Gavin, it's something we've discussed a bunch. When it comes to creative writing or analysis, you know, there might be multiple paths to what would feel like a correct answer, right? Well, like, you, know, you can find your way to bullshit in many different directions, right? Like yes. I'm a very good at bullshit. I think it's why I was like an English major. I'm very good at it. Math is slightly different. Yeah. Welcome to our podcast, right? Yeah. We're both pretty good yeah. at finding our way to BS. Uh, but here it's like, it's either right or it's wrong, right? It's yeah. literally a one or a zero. This is, this is math. And it's not only show, this is a great flex of the multimodality, right? Taking a photo, having it interpret it, handwritten math versus hard-coded math. It's mm -hmm. reasoning through it. It's telling you where you were wrong. One thing to be aware of is they released some stats. As you mentioned earlier, You know, this is just kind of barely beating to GPT-4 in some places. And at grade school, basic math, it does pretty well. It's at 94%. One thing to know is both of these models, both GPT and, and Gemini Ultra, the most biggest, the biggest version of this, are at 53.2% and GPT-4 was at 52.9% on challenging math problems, which means mm. algebra, calculus, <laughs> geometry, all the stuff that you think of as like the kind of math where you start to scratch your head as an as a English major. So we're still in a place where it's only at 50% there, but this is the first step. Okay, so let's jump to another video that they released. This is a test of Gemini's multimodal capabilities. And there's some really interesting demonstrations in here but they should all come with a bit of an asterisk on there, which is there is a blog post associated with this video where they explain the prompts and the portions of the instructions that were cut out from the video, Gavin. Yes, so yes. let's see some of the capabilities and then let's sanity check it. Testing Gemini. Here we go. Tell me what you see. I see you placing a piece of paper on the table. I see a squiggly line. It looks like a bird to me. Hmm, what if I add this? 
It is a duck. Yes. The duck appears to be blue. I think that's a shout out to uh, Billy Madison, an old Adam Sandler movie. Is it? I drew the duck blue because I wanted to see a blue duck. Oh, wow. That's quacktastic. <laughs> What's happening here, by the way, is they're making this video look like this is a real-time thing. Like a video is going into Gemini and it's watching and observing and narrating. What's actually happening is that behind the scenes, they're snapping photos and sending a few yes. frames at a time and yes. changing the prompt each time. Based on what you see, come up with a game idea. Oh, and use emojis, please. How about this? We can play a game called Guess the Country. Sure, let's do it. <laughs> Clue one. This country is the home of the kangaroo, the koala, and the Great Barrier Reef. Oh, oh come on, Gemini. Easy. Well, okay, so interesting Yes, that's pretty here, cool. Right? That's pretty cool. It's, but this was the one where I was like, ah, is this, is how this much real? smoke do I have to fan away to get to the mirror? And if you go to the Google's for, Google for Developers blog, there is a game creation section here, and it says instructions. Let's play a game. Think of a country and give me a clue. The clue must be specific enough that there is only one correct country. I will try pointing at the country on a map. So they gave it that much instruction. It wasn't like, hey, come up with an idea yeah. for a game. All right, so here's the last one that we'll highlight from the video because again, it really makes it seem like it is watching along with you, but the blog post paints a slightly different picture. What so here movie we see are they acting out here? That's Ernest Goes to Camp, right? Is that what that is? <laughs> it's The Matrix, for God's sakes. Of course it's The Matrix. I think they are acting out the famous bullet time scene from The Matrix. Ooh, nice. Oh, now that was really incredible, right, Gap? Yeah. And then you go back to the blog post, and it says, image sequences. What if we show Gemini a sequence of images? Let's see if we can show a few still frames from a game of charades and okay. have Gemini guess the movie, which, again, is reinforcing to me that this is not, they're not feeding it video. Okay. and having it into it. Maybe it is capable of that. It might be looking at the stills on the back end, right? So that might be sure. one of the ways that it works is that it's not actually looking at a video, but it's cutting the video up into stills and trying to interpret it based on what frames are because that's how you know videos are just pictures put together really fast. So maybe that's what it's doing in some forms. I'd be more impressed if they could get a guy in a ladder and, they, and you ask them, <laughs> if this guy falls off this ladder, what movie do you think he's from? <laughs> And they said Ernest goes, to, <laughs> Ernest goes to camp. That would be impressive to me. So, Gavin, let's summarize because it is kind of out, as in you could play with one model with Bard. The, the Gemini Ultra is not here yet. I've seen some folks already posting on X saying, wow, the coding capabilities are great. It's fixing things. It seems to be benchmarking slightly better than OpenAI across the board. How do we feel? Has the Earth shifted beneath our feet in a major way? Here's my biggest take on this is that Google had to do this. And I mean that in a couple of ways. One, I think they had to do this from a business standpoint, because I think if they didn't, they were going to get like crapped on across the entire board. We already saw a bajillion where's Google tweets after the open AI drama went right. down. But second of all, I think they had to do this because it's clear that this is not a giant leap past GPT-4 from what we've seen so far, right? Just based on the benchmarks, even the actual benchmarks that we've seen, this is not leaping past it. And we might now be preparing for the next few years of iteration, Gavin, where it's not like a monumental breakthrough every six months. Oh, wow. Yeah. We get these percentage or three performance boosts across the board, which is still fascinating and yeah. mind blowing and incredible. Absolutely. So GPT-5 can up it just a little bit. And then Google comes in. We'll see what Apple has to announce probably next year. I feel like they I have guess, to yeah. start saying AI more. We'll also yeah. see what Meta is going to offer. So it's still a wild time.